Hello, 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 and welcome to the Eating Left Fit podcast. I can't believe I'm doing this. This has taken me such a long time to come here, and I was sitting down and I was trying to think of like, what am I going to talk about? Uh, putting it off. I've actually recorded three episodes like last year, and never released them all down to fear and self doubt. So I just decided today, literally like ten minutes ago, that I'm going to sit down now and record this because if I don't do it now. I'm never going to do it. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, There's something that got me going at the start was not many people will listen to it at the start anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So if you're here, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So I'm just going to go through like an introduction of like who I am, why I've started this and just generic shit. Okay, look, I am eating litter and I'm currently living in Australia. We are at Mermaid Beach in Queensland. Uh, no, not Queensland. Go Coast, I think. I'm not sure. Oh, my geography. Um, so yeah, that that is where we are. We've only recently moved to Australia since February. And this was something that was a long time coming for me. And I'll not get too much into it right now, but we can dive into it in different episodes. So if you know me personally, hello. <laughs> and if you maybe know me from my Instagram page, at Eating Lit Fit, that's somewhere where I'm very vocal. I put a lot of content out there. I have no problem on speaking on my stories and speaking on my stuff that I'm very passionate about. Um, but sometimes when I'm creating content, I'm like, oh, I wish I could just expand this a wee bit more. And I could go in depth a wee bit more and have like a full blown conversation about this because you know yourself like Instagram is like quick, quick, quick. You have to have it quick and to the point or you're just going to get scrolled on by. So this is also one of the reasons why I wanted to create this um, so that I can obviously voice my opinion a wee bit uh, more. But ultimately the goal of this podcast is genuinely to leave you better than I find you. I want you like people to live a happier more fulfilled life and this is something that I want to achieve out of this podcast like I know like my background is fitness female health and all that other fun stuff and that is something that I post quite a lot on social media on my Instagram page and also Facebook as well and the goal is really to be a wee bit more diverse like I am more than fitness like I am more than female health and I have other aspects to me like I'm very spiritual I'm into yoga meditation books you know and just general chit chat like I'm a normal human being and sometimes on Instagram I'm afraid to portray that so maybe starting the podcast will help me show the different sides um through different conversations different topics and yeah just a a wee bit more in depth to who I am so yeah I also want to say a big shout out to all my current clients any previous clients and everybody who likes shares and follows all of my stuff because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't without you and I just want to say a massive appreciation to you because you make my heart so warm you make me live such a fulfilled life and thank you so much for supporting me for trusting me and walking along this journey like you can actually see here in my voice that I'm so nervous so repetition repetition we got this okay so yeah the true eating doesn't want this to be structured the true eating wants to come on here and show who she really is so that is really what I also want to achieve out of this. So please don't think that it's going to be all female health orientated. It's going to be fat loss. It's going to be fitness. Yes, I am. My goal is to get like really um, good people on here to talk about female health. And it's something that I'm very passionate in. And this is what I want to share with this podcast as well. But this podcast isn't going to be solely on that. It's going to be a lot. Okay. So I'm just going to give you like if you're interested, <laughs> I'm just going to give you like a background into how I've got to where I am now. And I just did land in fitness, okay? So my journey to date. Now, I'm not going to do any dates. Uh, I just want to say something that I'm dyslexic. So if you ever hear me getting dates, numbers, pff, words mixed up, maybe the wrong pronunciation, I can't even say that, even the wrong pronunciation of stuff. Um, just bear with me because I'm dyslexic and this is also something that held me back from such a long time was being dyslexic and getting my words muddled up and 
yeah, just a lot of no self belief. And now it's time to shine your light. Okay, so basically my journey to date. So we'll start off with school. So school to me, I really enjoyed school. I loved it. I loved the structure. I loved going to school. But to be very honest, I was never very good at it. My school reports were always, she could do better. She could, if she just done this, if she just tried harder, she would achieve this. If she would just listen. And to be really honest with you, I wasn't interested in any of the stuff that they were talking about. And I was just like, oh, I couldn't be bothered with this like I was just like this is just a lower shit to be really honest and I was like this is wasting my time and if you know me I just don't like stuff that I believe is wasting my time um and I just hate time wasting so yeah that is something in school really annoyed me but I loved going to PE I loved having like deep meaningful conversations so that's when I was in tune so that's what I knew that I enjoyed so then when I got to A-levels I got to pick the stuff that I enjoyed so I picked business studies ICT and PE and just so happens that I am now running my own business that is on social media is to do with a lot of health and fitness and yeah it just all interlocks but that was not the path okay so yeah we decided to do that the reason why I done that was because they were my three best grades in GCSEs I think I got seven or eight GCSEs I didn't get my ma's I was shit at science and I would say I definitely could have tried harder but I didn't want to in school so that was that I done really well in my A levels I got like one of the top achievers which was a shock to me and a shock to everybody else because I just about scraped into my A levels so I done really well with that and then we got into uni and my only choices in uni was to go to England and I just always had this deep rooted thing inside me that I wanted to go to uni away from hometown and I chose to go to uni in Liverpool, Liverpool John Murs and we done a business management degree. In John Murs it was amazing, I will say that if you ever want to go to uni outside of your hometown just do it, just take the jump because it genuinely has been the biggest and the most impactful thing of my life. I will say I, I was never the same ever since I moved to Liverpool. Liverpool allowed me to express who I was, show my own wee personality, um, try on new clothes, like it allowed me to be my funky weird self um, and it allowed me to meet different people, different cultures and it showed me that there is more to life than your hometown. There is more to life than going to the same nightclub every single weekend. There is more to life than just the same shit. And I was like, oh, everybody, like if you have the opportunity, jump at it. Because uh, I know that everybody doesn't have that opportunity. But so yeah, not going to lie, the first two years of uni was partying. I shaved years <laughs> off my life. Um, that's probably another episode and we'll not get into that today. I'll get a couple of my uni friends on. We'll talk about that. But that shaved years off my life and also some of the darkest moments of my life were throughout uni. Um, but that was down to a lot of things that we'll talk about in other episodes. But yeah, I, I don't regret it and it's made me to the person who I am now and it's helped me along this journey. So then when we went to so that was the first two years of uni. Then in, I done my placement year and I done my placement year in Moy Park. <laughs> I got I actually got a really good HR placement job and I absolutely loved it. My manager, my whole team was absolutely amazing. I actually met Courtney, who's one of my really good friends now. And yeah, I had such a ball in that job. But this is when I hit rock bottom. And this is when... I did contemplate if I wanted to be here. I got everything that I wanted. I had the job. I had the car. I had the finance. I had a secure family. I had a loving family. I had a loving boyfriend. You name it, I had it. But deep inside me, I felt dead. I felt like I was numb. I was numb. I just didn't want life like I, I was just like waking up every day and being like oh is this it is this it is this all that life has to offer me and at that point I was very young I think I, 
I'm going to get all of the dates and times mixed up. But I would say I wasn't. I say I was about 20, 21. I'm only 25 now. Um, but yeah, I would say I was only about that age. And I remember Nathan was, we were doing long distance at the time. And Nathan was in uni in Liverpool. And I rang him like early morning, about half six. Being like, I feel like I need, really, I really need help. And he was like, what's going on? And I was like crying my eyes out. And I was like, I can't get control of my thoughts, Nathan. I can't get into control of my thoughts. And then I, I was like, it's okay. I'll go, like, I'll just leave him be because I didn't want to worry him because he was in Liverpool. And I was like, I'll just go up to my mum. And I went up to my mum and I was like, mum, like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I can't get control of my thoughts. Like, I'm scared to be on my own. On my own. Like, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. And mum was like, right, take the day off work. You know, you'd be fine. You'd be grand. And... I was like, yeah, like, uh, no, I was like, yeah, maybe take the day off. And I was like, no, no, I'll go into work, take, take the, you know, the pressure off my mind. So it'll help distract me. But then I went into work and that's when all hell broke loose. I couldn't focus. And I genuinely thought that I was losing my marbles. Um, and I broke down in work. And I, thank God, Joanne, uh, shout out to Joanne. Um, I just went into Joanne and was like, Joanne, I don't know what's wrong with me. And Joanne actually taught me deep belly breathing. And through that, then I was offered to go to therapy. And we then started going to therapy. I started going to therapy for a good while. And that was the most turning point in my life. That I never wanted to get myself into that mental state again ever and that petrifies me how bad I was um and on the on the outside you would have thought that oh she has her shit together you know she's got the job she's got like that this was the job that I wanted love and boyfriend like everything was just going but internally I was just dead I was just dead so I went to therapy we we started our self-development and I haven't looked back so it wasn't and I can't just click my fingers and be like well I'm not even doing podcasts now I'm eating like this now no I didn't I didn't jump that quick so we went back to uni I met some amazing girls um Naomi Kate who are now my best friends now and then Zoe who I met in first year and second year so yeah went back and obviously still de- started the self-development guru shit <laughs> and yeah then it was like right got my got my mental health out of the gutters um decided then I was going to stay in uni or sorry stay in Liverpool because we're back now in final year and uh I was gonna go to uni and or sorry I was gonna go to uni get a job in Liverpool and then go to Australia but the big I don't think I can mention the big c word here in case like it gets shadow banned or something but we'll just say the big c word and maybe everybody will know what that means okay so the big c word happened and my life also was turned upside down that I thought it was anyway and I moved home from uni and I had no job and I was literally in my mom and dad's house like what the fuck am I going to do with my life I have no job I I didn't intend to be back at home even though I'm grateful that I have a roof over my head and I don't know what I'm gonna do like uh, like the big sea words happened and I'm sure we can all relate to the chaos of that moment so I heard a podcast and a Brian Kane said this um and he said if you're not earning you should be learning and I was like oh that's a really good sign I was like so I've no job I've got this degree um if you're not earning you should be learning and I was like right well what am I interested in I've always been interested in fitness the gyms were closed so let's educate myself a wee bit more on fitness so down the rabbit hole of the James Smith not that book and he talked about the menstrual cycle and how his clients at different stages a month will be hungrier um maybe can't lift as much in the gym and x y and z and that was a rabbit hole of female health and that was where we started then I decided that I'm going to do my PT course and we done our PT course over the big C word and that was in um, ECA in Belfast. They were absolutely amazing. The community that we've built there, still friends with a lot of the people there. 
and even people who have done courses at different times were all friends so yeah the community that ECA has created is absolutely amazing then that was that we then got then I graduated as a PT and uh then graduated as a PT and started small so I started one-to-ones and then decided to take the leap and change gyms and this was actually one of the biggest moments even though this sounds so small this was the biggest moments of my career um I was doing mindset coaching with Philip Brady and I was in this gym and everybody was absolutely amazing in the gym I loved them but the for um for just certain reasons I wasn't allowed to do small groups which is absolutely for it's their gym their rules their rights that's absolutely fine and I had asked a few times like could I do small groups blah 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 could I do small groups and, and the answer was always no and I was like okay okay so I'd asked like three times and I was like right okay I'm not going to get to allowed to do small groups but I love the gym and I love the people there and I remember having a call with Phil Brady who I'll definitely go on this podcast and I was like Phil I don't want to be at this gym anymore because I can't do what I want to do and I want to start doing small groups because I can impact more women and work with more women and small groups is just something that I really want to lean into and we had a conversation and then ended up having the confidence to leave and start the small groups. Now if anybody has been to my small groups I miss you all so much. I absolutely love the small groups I loved every minute of them, the community that we got, the banter that we had and all to my 6am girlies, you know who you are Um, you always look like you were hating your lives but you showed up on a Monday, Wednesday and a Friday and you done your workout at 6am, like go use as well my evening girlies, like I always feel like um, there was like two split like personalities, my my evening girlies used for absolute banter like absolutely crack was had we had a fucking ball girls didn't we so yeah that's we we then progressed to small groups and I was in the rabbit hole of female health and other things going on within my own health aspect um I'll not go into it in this podcast I just don't want this podcast to ramble on I just want this podcast to be an overview so yeah I was in a rabbit hole of female health and wanting to learn a wee bit more with my own health conditions going on at the time um so I then got news that I was I didn't think I was so my health insurance wouldn't cover my my uh my health insurance wouldn't cover my operation and I was raging because I've been playing for this healthcare for like a year and a half and then I was like right well I'm not getting the operation then because it's going to cost something like four grand and I was like no I can't this I was going to be taking this out of my Australia students right and I was like no I can't because I never had a plan of when I was going to Australia I just always had a plan that I was going to go and it's like I'm not taking that out of like that funding like I've worked my ass off to get that money so no uh, which in hindsight I was like oh maybe I should but it also came together because then it came through on the NHS and yeah I ended up getting that operation but that was the closing of the book of the small groups and it was very sudden um and I'm still so sad of how it went because I initially thought that I should be grand within a week of this operation but unfortunately it wasn't the operation um didn't go as smoothly as we had planned and I ended up getting like an infection and I wasn't my fit and ready self and I just didn't want to go back onto the gym floor again because I just my mental health had started to take a dip and I think it was just to do with all the operations the trauma to the body the stress of getting this operation the stress of running the business and I just thought that if I was to run about the gym floor again and I know that all the girls were like but eating like we'll do a lot of it you know we'll set it all up and I know that they would have I know that they would have but I just know myself I would have worked myself into the ground and I don't think I could have got myself back out back up back up again so that was the plug on the pulling the plug on the small groups which was sad to come to an end um but who's, who never knows that we could ever start them up in the future but then we had to start to look to the positives and I was like right because 
I'm not fit to go back onto the gym floor again. Let's fucking dive deep into this female health because it's something I'm so positive about. And let's start thinking of the positives of online coaching. So the positives are that I can impact more people. I can have more education to women. I can help solve more problems out there with women's health um, that people are afraid to talk about. So that is why I was like, no, like let's light this fire up. What a quote that I love is that what's for you will never, ever, ever pass you. And that's something that I've um really, really learned moving here to Australia the most, to be honest. Like what is for you is will never pass you. And I know that that's so cliche, but that is that. And I don't really want to get too much into the like what I like the Australia life, like because. I think, yes, now I'm here. So, so then we've moved on in coaching and then we're now in Australia. So that was just a uh, lump sum of that. But I just want to say in regards to like the Australia lifestyle. The Australia, moving to Australia is extremely fucking hard. And I think people glamorize this on social media. I think people glamorize the ice baths. I think they glamorize the walks. Um, and portray that it's a really easy life. But it's not. Um... Moving to Australia has probably been one of the toughest things that I've had to do, but I've had like a lot of mental resilience moving up to it. A lot of tools in my toolbox to deal with the stress and the shit that goes wrong out here. Um, like obviously I have a very supportive partner, big shout out to Nathan um, as well to help me along the way. But I just want you to know that if you move country in like wherever you may go in, in hope that it's going to solve the problems that you have at, at home, it's not. Your problems will follow you wherever you go. And that is it. And I think that even when you go to Australia, your problems will be heightened even more. Because even more shit goes wrong. That you think wouldn't go wrong. And it will be heightened. You'll have more time with your thoughts. And yeah. So yeah, like realistically, like my life genuinely hasn't changed that much since I moved here. And Yes, the weather's better. That is absolutely amazing. Yes, um, uh, like genuinely, I would say yes, the weather's better. Um, but I still live the exact same life day to day. I'm a wee bit more lonely, um, because I don't have like a really tight, tight friend group yet. But well, I do to be fair, Kate and all them ones, but they live down in Brisbane. But because we're at the Gold Coast, I'm only here a week today. I don't have like a tight friend group here. So I would say I'm a wee bit more lonelier than what I would be at home. And I miss my dog. I'm a sister. I'm a mom and dad, of course. I'm a granda. <laughs> I miss my family. But yeah, day to day, my life is the exact same. I do my work. I go for a walk. I listen to a podcast. I learn. I train. That's it. Like that is me to tea. I'm doing more at the weekends to be fair. As in like social activities, seeing things and stuff like that, which I wouldn't have done at home. I just would have lay in bed and read a book at home. Or maybe just seeing my family. But other than that, my life isn't much different. I was already living a very fulfilled life at home. And I knew that I was going to be fulfilled when I moved here. So if you're moving away from home because you aren't fulfilled. And hoping that Australia is going to fulfill you. But you're doing the exact same habits. I'm sorry to tell you that you're not going to live a fulfilled life. You do have to go out there and get it for you. So yeah, that is that roundup of that. And... I don't really know how to end these, but in summary, I want this podcast to leave you better than I found you. Um, just a summary of what I have been at to date. I feel like that was a bit shit, but fuck it, it's done. And yeah, I will be bringing on different guests throughout this these seasons. I have a couple of guests who I really want to bring on. I want to bring on my clients because... I love having conversation with my clients. Uh, I think like we don't just have the typical fat loss advice, female health advice. I feel like we have genuine connection, conversations, have a bit of banter and have a bit of crack. So yeah, I will bring in all my clients, anybody who's coached me in the past, anybody who I look up to, other PTs out there, other spiritual girls out there. And yeah, Thank you so much for listening. I can't believe that I have recorded this. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's probably a bit shit. But <laughs> I appreciate you for taking the time to listen to it. And look forward to... What would I say? Hearing from you soon. Thank you. <laughs>